it's great to have you back. I, I'm very grateful for you and tuning in and uh, journeying with us through these lessons and these studies. We're in the book of Acts, chapter 20. Uh, for this lesson, we're going to look at verses 25 through 27. We are in the midst of a rather lengthy uh, encouragement, um, farewell address that Paul is giving to the Ephesian leaders, and it gives us an insight into uh, Paul's heart, his passion. It, it really also encourages us and challenges us to, to what really matters most, what commitment-wise, um, belief-wise. Uh, and so really there's some, some helpful insights here as we get behind the curtain of uh, just one uh, influential person in the early church and how they trusted Jesus how they served Jesus. And so let's pray together. We'll get into uh, these verses and hopefully be not only encouraged, but challenged as well. Let's pray. God, how great and good you are as you sit upon the throne over the creation, your heavenly throne. Uh, you are glorious and you are good. And I do humbly ask that you would speak to our minds and our hearts, that you would work mightily in us, shape us, O oh God, conform us to the image of your Son, Jesus Christ, not only in character, but in our conduct, that our lives would be spent living and loving you. And so, God, minister to our minds and hearts now for your glory, in Jesus' name, amen. So Paul, in yesterday's lesson, Paul uh, opened up uh, kind of the, the second part. I've, I've broken this up into a bunch of parts, but Friday we looked at how Paul was reminding us that we can be strengthened through suffering, and then in verses 22 through 24 that, that we uh, are, are to spend our life loving our Savior. And today, uh, the importance of uh, being assured of absolute forgiveness let me read the passage, verse 25. And now behold, I know that none of you among whom I have gone about proclaiming the kingdom will see my face again. Therefore, I testify to you this day that I am innocent of the blood of all, for I did not shrink from declaring to you the whole counsel of God. Paul is uh, proclaiming and asserting the fact that he is innocent. And this is not something that he has decided for himself. This is Paul really standing on and believing in the promise of God, that he is innocent. And innocent not only for past transgressions, but innocent also in the fact that uh, Paul has zealously sought to tell as many people as possible about Jesus Christ. And, and he's saying, I stand before the throne and I am covered in the blood of Jesus Christ. My sins are forgiven. And I stand before the, before the throne of God and God is not going to say, well, why didn't you tell this person? Paul is, is uh, generously scattering the seed of the gospel to tell whomever and everyone he can. And so Paul, Paul spent his life to make known the grace of God in Jesus Christ. That's what verse 24 is saying. Paul says, I, I do not count my life of any value, nor as precious to myself, if only I may finish my course, the ministry to which I received, that is to testify to the gospel of the grace of God. Paul spent his life for that purpose, for that goal. Uh, essentially, Paul is saying, my motivation of life the aim of my life, which is the aim of everyone's life that is a follower of Jesus. Jesus said this, that we're to take up our cross and follow him daily. So the aim and the goal of our life is to seek Jesus in everything, in our work, in our leisure, uh, in our TV watching, in our eating, in our shopping, in our parenting our children and, and loving our grandchildren, uh, all of those are means by which we are to seek Jesus 
and serve others with the love of Jesus Christ. Not just, you know, trying to improve their life, but ultimately to tell them about Jesus. And so seeking Jesus and serving Jesus. And Paul is saying, I've spent my life doing this. He also says that uh, be comforted because uh, I'm going to leave you and we will not see each other again. He says, um, I, I know uh, that none of you among whom I have gone about proclaiming the kingdom will see my face again. Paul's not trying to drop a bomb to, to discourage them. Paul is revealing to them his awareness of the plan and the purpose of God, that, that he, God has him on a trajectory that is going to prevent them from crossing paths again this side of eternity before the, the glorious presence of God in heaven. And, and so Paul is saying, I'm innocent. Uh, I, I did not shrink back. Paul is confident, confident that all his sins are forgiven. And Paul is absolutely committed to pointing others to Jesus. Paul's confidence compelled him to risk all for God. And we've been around people that are confident. We've been around people whose confidence shows through in a, in a kind of arrogance and what I want to assure us of is Paul's confidence does not come from anything internal to himself. Paul's confidence is based upon what's outside of him, and that is Christ. There's a very big difference. It's a subtle difference. But Paul is not assured, and Paul is not uh, confident, and, and Paul is not strengthened by anything about himself, but only about Christ. And that's a big difference, because confidence in self leads to arrogance and pride. Confidence in Christ leads to humility and grace. And Paul is com confident in Christ, and his confidence in Christ compels him then to risk all for Christ. See, we will, we will give ourselves fully to that which we are most confident in. If I'm confident in myself, if I'm confident in my appearance, in my fashion, in my opinions, in my knowledge, if I'm confident in me, then what I'm going to do is I'm going to spend all that I am to make me better, me more important, me stronger. But if our confidence is in Christ, we're not going to spend all to make me better or me more widely known, or me strengthened, we are going to spend all for the sake of Christ. That's what Paul's saying here. So he is absolutely assured, not only of the forgiveness of Jesus, but he's absolutely assured that Christ is all and everything in his life. Where does your confidence lie? Is your confidence in yourself? Is your confidence in someone or something outside of yourself, which is maybe incrementally a little bit better, but ultimately our confidence is to be in Jesus. And the confidence we have in Jesus leads to assurance that we are granted a peace that passes all understanding. We are granted the, the promise that nothing will separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. We are granted the, the assurance that he who began a good work in you will carry it on to the completion of the day of Christ. Where or in whom or what is the object and source of your confidence. May it be Christ. Then you can risk all for the sake of Christ. Let's pray together. Lord, be our all in all, our everything. You are Lord. No one comes to the Father except by you. You are the one that is the quintessential, the, the, the paramount expression of the love of God. For God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son. You, Jesus, are the one who innocently suffered in our place that we as guilty sinners may be pardoned and forgiven 
and restored by faith in Christ to fellowship with you, Almighty God. Lord, free us from our confidence in self. Free, our, free us from confidence in anything within the creation. And Lord, situate our confidence upon you, who never leaves nor forsakes us. And God, through this confidence in you, may we be assured of your goodness and moved and motivated to risk all for you because in risking all for you, we can lose nothing. But in risking all for anything but you, Lord, we in the end lose it all. May it be you only, Lord, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, may the Lord be with you and may he truly be your confidence and thereby your assurance and then the motivation of your life to risk and spend all for Christ. I'll see you again tomorrow.